Where do we go from here, chaos or community? I said earlier already that the movement was an invitation to the nation to do some repentance and healing. And that, that healing must go forward. A part of the characteristic of our land today is the characteristic of chaos. King asked the question, where do we go from here? Chaos or community. The movement asked the question, dramatized the question, saying to the United States, saying to all of us, we have a choice. If we continue in the pathway where the to toxic poisons continue to lurk in the present from the past without the nation waking up and facing to the realities of where those poisons come from and how those poisons must be uh, forced to vanquish, vanquished and to be cleansed out of the earth of American life and spirituality. Um, that still uh, the task remaining because religion in the United States has in large measure uh, operated from a frame of other concerns. As I helped to work in the struggle in the movement, I had a recognition that the movement was at the heart, the finest example of Christian faith in the United States at that time. The core of what I thought to be that meaning was Jesus in Mark 12, uh, 28 to 34. You know, I'm sure, that story very, very well. The friendly scribe, according to the Mark account, who saw Jesus in the court of the temple, again and again taking puzzling issues and difficult questions from his opponents. But this scribe did not apparently sense himself as an opponent. He, he sensed himself as a friend. He was from some distance maybe uh, hearing the conversation and appreciating the way in which Jesus responded over and over again and then comes forward to suggest to Jesus his question, an issue discussed radically in those days and in that century in Judaism. And he asked, what is the first commandment? What is the first? What is the most important commandment? Now that discussion is not in the Christian churches, apparently in the United States, <laughs> a, a, a way in which our Christianity has operated persistently for the last 20 or 30 years of the, in a sense, the cosmetic conflicts in local communities where some group wants to put up the Ten Commandments. And then because there are other people who say no, not in public places, not in public buildings, you know the story, you know the conflict. Again and again, Jesus responds to this scribe. What is the first commandment? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then Jesus quickly comments. There is no commandment more important, greater than these. In the repetition of that episode, in Matthew, Jesus is made to say, upon these two commandments, upon these commandments, hang the entirety of the law and the prophets. 
the movement was about attention to the neighbor. We had courage enough and faith enough to move into the midst of the hostility of racism and Jim Crow law, law, custom, attitudes, thoughts, worship, prayers, and to say, look, this must be dismantled because it violates entirely the critical mandate that to love God, to love eternity, to love truth, to love beauty, is to put at the center of that beauty the neighbor, not some neighbors, but the neighbor, period. And all the neighbors that are available. I would love to have somebody in one of these communities wanting to put up the Ten Commandments. I would saying this is so important for public life. No, sisters and brothers, it's not that Jesus is abrogating the Ten Commandments, but is insisting in the scriptures, we must make choices. And the critical choice in our human journey is the choice of whether or not to give up on ourselves and to give up on others that public life and private life has no dimensions in comparison to making people first, the babies first, the children first, the young people first, that we adults of the churches somehow in our pulpits, in our communities, before mayors and city councils, we must somehow help our nation gain the spiritual insight that all religion is not good religion, that all religion is not the same, that all religion is not equal, that much in the, of the complication of human life is that it is complicated, but there is a simplicity of spirituality and direction and journeying that if we avoid it, we lose everything. The movement was about community, beginning with the neighbor. To the extent to which our nation has not heard that message, has not wondered why so many folk, Rosa Parks, Matthew McCollum, were people of the churches, people of faith and love, to that extent, the nation has lost, in some ways, the voice of eternity that it must come to hear if their nation is to recover its own finest moments of its own history. So um, the choice is, is ours. The movement sought to make that, sought to help us see that choice and that possibility. What I'm insisting is here that the movement is more than a civil rights movement, the movement of the 50s and 60s and into the 70s, the intensified 20 years was indeed a voice of God calling the nation to make choices about where we go from here.